uh, we will start with the presentations. First of all, I'd like to thank the Energy Press for uh, this honor, for inviting us in this uh, forum, this conference. We are at the at the end of the conference, and the title is the title of my presentation has to do uh, the, with technology evolution for uh, integration of RAS to the power grid. For people that uh, might be surprised to see two logos here, the Hitachi and Abebe, uh, let me just say that the Hitachi ABB power grid has a long legacy that started from Asia Brown Bovary in, um, at the end of the 19th century. And in 1988, they, were, um, they merged into ABB with uh, giving many, uh, it was a pioneering company with, and in uh, 2018, um, the power grid sector became um, a new sector with the participation of Hitachi and it has now the largest installed base compared to any other manufacturer. It, uh, its business units are active in uh, automation, integration, um, high voltage, and the development of high voltage equipment and transformers of all sizes. It has a presence in 90 years. It has 115 factories worldwide, 30, 38,000 employees, um, and uh, 2,000 of whom deal with R&D, and of course, the headquarters of the company are still in Zurich, in Switzerland, at the Brown the Bovary Strasse. Uh, with regard to the mix, our business mix, our clients, our customers are the industry, the utilities and transport infrastructure, customers for services and products or systems, and our revenues, about $10 billion, uh, you, uh, dollars, are distributed uh, worldwide, come from the whole world. Uh, the agenda of this presentation has four parts. One is to look at the new energy ecosystem, what are the drivers uh, of uh, the technology developments. Then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, digital solutions in uh, storage systems. Then about uh, the connection of the offshore wind parks, which is the new challenge that we are facing and we have discussed extensively today the challenges and solutions for the connection with AC or DC power and the new technologies for offshore floating uh, parks. Now, starting with this new energy ecosystem, you can see uh, it here uh, in, in the picture. Um, starting from the production with the renewables, uh, the energy, the distribution of power, our houses. What are all these new things that are developing now? Essentially, it's the development of the distributed energy resources, which are not the typical production, the typical generation from the power companies with fuel, um, with fossil fuel, but uh, using RES, using solar power, using wind parks, but we also have other consumers that could uh, become providers uh, by returning energy to the system, such as uh, electrical vehicles and, of course, the autonomous energy storage systems that must be integrated in order to support the RES penetration into the grid. This makes the system very difficult, both for the operators and for new consumers or producers, or this prosumers, producers and consumers, this uh, new type uh, that want maximum uh, value for their assets. And this is the driver, this is the incentive that um, helps the technology move forward. So this very complex new ecosystem requires digitization. 
to a level that will uh, take information from these distributed energy sources to the users and to the operators so they can enhance they can enhance, they can add value to uh, the customer's investment um, to optimize the operation of the system, to have a reliable system because all these complex uh, scenarios uh, have to be controlled. And of course, it gives us the opportunity for new investments as well. Now talking about these digital solutions, digital systems, and about storage in specific, specifically uh, for uh, solar uh, photovoltaic and wind power, we see that all this information that is required, we can find it, we can look at it, we can see it from a center using uh, communications technologies and uh, using the tools that we have in order to utilize to the best uh, possible degree, the management and operation of all these systems. You see with the red, uh, color red, the services that the system, the EMS system, a portfolio of systems and services uh, developed by the group, uh, you see them. And uh, with the black color are, are other different uh, capabilities, automation of uh, substations, of uh, facilities, things that we don't have the time to talk about right now. Now we have to look at how these systems, the grid uh, edge solutions can serve renewables and energy storage. We see that the devices that are connected are the distributed energy uh, sources and these on all this information through a gateway gateway and uh, safe communications cyber secure communications are transferred and uh, controlled by the consumers or consumers the, the prosumers and by the um, uh, by other users commercial users that utilize this energy uh, uh, exchange and of course additional capabilities um, to use uh, renewables as uh, virtual power plants which are equivalent uh, uh, energy generating units that can be modeled. Now looking at this e-mesh portfolio we see that on the one side we have uh, installations, we have systems at those facilities that are, at, that are physically there, physically present at the facilities, such as the eMesh e e power store, which is a battery. We can use communication with local control systems and communication systems and SCADA through a cyber safe, a cyber secure communication. We can move to the cloud and to provide additional uh, information uh, uh, such as optimization, analytics, and uh, service in order to improve uh, productivity and uh, income. The technology in order to trying to uh, improve the investment and the uh, the yield, the, the return on the investment, we are looking at some local uh, installations uh, of uh, battery energy storage systems for 250 or 500 kilowatts or even larger, one megawatt, 1000 kilowatts. And there are different topologies that can be used for any of these applications, such as um, frequency monitoring, uh, peak shaving, uh, base load uh, leveling, excuse me, uh, peak shaving, uh, spinning reserve,
also. We have the possibility to transition uh, on and off grid, seamless transition. Uh, centralized or decentralized control, optimal use of battery, depending on the application that is required because uh, different uh, batteries are used in different applications and of course the integration of uh, renewables. Therefore, such a system, such as the power store using the e-mesh, we can have all these um, facilities that we talked about either as a um, package or with, uh, we can have multiple such uh, systems in blocks of up to 100 megawatts. So it's a very easy um, uh, implementation, easy application, because we're talking about standard units, standardized using units, and that means cost optimization. And also we have the ability to get information from the energy storage uh, systems, from the substation, uh, connection substations from uh, even from the wind turbines and through real-time controls and monitoring we can get give this information either to a company that provides remote service or to the operator the owner's operator or even to the TSO at the level of transmission or even distribution and you see that these capabilities can be either uh, on-premises, local, or for a fleet of photovoltaic parks or wind parks, you can manage all these things remotely. Uh, like a smaller or larger electric company. We talked about hybrid systems, hybrid plants. For us, that means two different technologies, either wind parks or photovoltaics, and uh, of course, storage, which uh, serves to improve, uh, to optimize uh, the return on this investment. Some questions, some issues, because all these area systems are uh, the, the, the production is stochastic, um, whether you have the wind or not, the sun or not. So these well storage allows you to optimize the operation of uh, RES by using common systems, electronic systems, to uh, improve the operation in order to. Uh, uh, improve the levelized cost of energy. Then, we will talk about the challenges and the solutions uh, with offshore wind connections, AC or DC connection. You see some applications here, how these interconnections are um, used. We will focus on these AC and DC offshore wind connections. You, as we know, uh, wind turbine today uh, are from give from five to fifteen megawatts through um, under uh, underwater cables. We have transmission as well with uh, lower frequencies, usually. Uh, what is used in transportation or tram systems. And also we have transmission after collection at offshore substations. Uh, these are, this is trans, uh, transported to the grid either uh, with DC if the distance is uh, larger or with AC. But uh, there is a need of course for reactive compensation in that case. and. And uh, if the distance is shorter, AC uh, transfer is used. The um, a Hitachi uh, ABB group has entered this field with uh, constructions with projects since 2008. You see some of these uh, projects, some substations that are uh, offshore, either floating or uh, bottom fixed. 
on the at the northern sea uh, where um, there the, the, the depths may be even less than 20 meters so there's also an installed base uh, and um, there's also uh, um, excuse me there's also a lot of experience uh, with uh, platforms as well and connections uh, with uh, DC connections and there's also uh, an AC connection we are going to look at these technologies now that are being developed these are two uh, important issues these are substations, uh, offshore substations, and substations where the connection uh, goes up to the mainland. Onshore substations. We have different solutions here. And the main problems that we have have to do with the weight and the volume of the installations on these platforms. To date, all substations that have been built are customized. There's no standardization. And uh, another issue is how much these systems can take because they are exposed to the weather elements and to the sea. Imagine today we have this uh, ballos, the, uh, the storm in, uh, in Greece. And imagine what would happen to the cables uh, for the interconnection. So these have to be designed to, uh, to, uh, to withstand the elements. Also, because of the technology that is used for the floating uh, platforms, of course, we have to combine the electrical technology and the shipping technology and the um, installations that you see are building ship uh, yards, large yards uh, with the participation of many specialized, different specialized companies. Another issue is safety because people are working on those uh, substations, on those platforms and uh, when these are designed uh, they have to, provisions have to be made in case of uh, uh, evacuation or in case of an emergency, a difficult situation. And of course, these systems must meet all the codes for the, the, uh, the operator um, that requires um, specific behavior and, and specific performance in terms of uh, uh, voltage, in terms of harmonics, in terms of uh, uh, short circuits, and of course, consumption so that energy that is consumed can be the uh, minimum uh, possible. We see, uh, this is a case study, a project that is in operation uh, in the UK from E.ON, 400 megawatts installed capacity, 116 turbines. You see the installation on the right for uh, the compensation of the uh, reactive power from the cables for it's a, when we have a distance of many uh, um, hundreds of kilometers you have to have this compensation uh, otherwise the energy that you produce cannot be accepted so we have the statcom system static compensators four systems that ensure uh, proper connection to the grid. This is another substation that's 30 kilometers off the Belgian coast. coast. It's 325 megawatts of wind power that is installed, that's fixed bottom, the installation, but it's not uh, like the normal substations that we know, that they have levels, they have different systems, one of them is, is the design of the, the basis, the metal basis, and uh, these things have to be customized for uh, specific applications. Another larger park that we see that is being now constructed is 800 uh, megawatts at the Northern Sea, about 100 kilometers of the Yorkshire coast, 
Here we need three compensators, 200 GVA each and MVA each, excuse me, this is the interconnection, you see all the systems. Now in terms of the new technologies in the offshore applications, what we see are typical challenges. We have accelerations that can uh, be more than uh, 5.2 G when we are talking about an earthquake of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, but at the level of the G's, the things are very uh, dangerous, obviously. Of course, uh, rusting, uh, corrosion is another problem. Um, the space, you need about 40 uh, square meters per MVA and the weight, uh, you need to handle about 5 to 10 tons per MVA. The cost, about 700k, uh, 700,000 United dollars per MVA. That's a typical cost. So for a larger uh, uh, larger substation, the cost increases. Um, another thing, because these are huge investments, like we said, if you want to add or increase something, you have to have enough space for it. You have to make provisions for it and also in order to uh, maintain it from all the um, uh, stress that it goes through. The transformers have to be compact enough. This is a transformer for a 10 uh, megawatt that goes inside the wind turbine, inside the towel and uh, inside the nacelle. And, um, about 1,000 of these uh, transformers are installed in the operation. Of course, they have to be slim enough to be able to get in the NASA. And sometimes they're, because the cooling systems is either, they are either oil cooled or uh, water cooled through pumps. We also use technology from the marine industry for cooling these transformers. This is uh, maybe rather new uh, as a design. It is a very compact transformer uh, installed in marine systems. And these are again uh, water cooled transformers, passive water, for environmental reasons as well. And this is the last thing, uh, my last slide, to say that the technology is there to solve all the challenges that are posed. And because today we try to bring the energy that's produced remotely to the areas, to the different areas, different uh, locations, this is a 1,100 kilovolt uh, um, DC power transformer, 12,000 megawatt power. The entire demand for Greece can go through this uh, transformer. You can understand the powers and the challenges to produce such a system. These systems are there. We have more than 100 such transformers and they are needed to transport uh, energy at long distances. As we know, today we will have a memorandum of understanding being signed between Egypt and Greece for the interconnection, electrical interconnection, uh, more than 2,500, 3,000 uh, kilometers. And then a similar system was signed between Egypt and Saudi for the transport of photovoltaic energy between the two countries. And that was as, um, given to our um, group. For, uh, to be executed. Now, I thought that was my last slide, but uh, yesterday afternoon there was a global announcement that our uh, group, uh, the name is Changes, and now the new name is Hitachi Energy, so I had to include this new logo. That will be the new logo for us, the new form that you will see us. We will be part of the Hitachi group a group of 100 uh, billion uh, uh, turnover, uh, 300,000 um, 
employees and we will be part of that group of course as you see we do have the legacy it's with us and we have the tradition of being first in technological developments thank you